But the purpose tonight that I saw, and you guys can suggest anything else that I may be missing, because I'm guessing there's probably a lot. Um, but I thought forming our leadership team is an important thing to start to decide and put together. Um, and then secondly, looking at our group buying model for the solar installation. Uh, there's some people, you guys wouldn't believe the amount of people that are messaging me that can't make the meetings that are like, hey, when are we getting going? When are we getting started? When are we getting started? So uh, I, I uh, think that's something that we want to look at. And then of course the co-op model and in Saskatoon and how would we look at that and how would we move forward there. So those are the basic outlines for what I thought we could cover tonight. We should be done uh, by quarter after eight or so. And, and um, uh, so I know that April and Susan are still coming. They said they'll, they'll be here and there's probably another couple people, but hopefully as they trickle in, we can just add to that conversation. Um, but uh, I don't know, with the group, uh, a group that's a little more manageable, maybe we could go around the table and people could just introduce themselves and say something about uh, their interests here. That's not a paragraph, but maybe a sentence or two. <laughs> um, so obviously I've introduced myself uh, before. I'm Josh Campbell and uh, I, I am, uh, my wife and I are interested initially just on getting solar panels on our roof but as I've heard more about this co-op thing it's actually pretty exciting as well uh, the, the possibility of, of going as a group and doing some larger scale projects that's that's why I'm here. My name is Matthew Borjo. I work in uh, RBC Community Securities have for quite a while so my wife and I also initially were interested in solar just for a new build that we're thinking of doing. So we just wanted to see if it made sense economically. And I find this interesting. My brother's in uh, BC working in environmental studies and he's always pushing me on this. And I think it's a cool idea. So I see what it was all about. Are you going to go? I just did. You missed him. <laughs> you know, for these years. <laughs> uh, my name is Andrew. Um, I was looking at solar panels about three years ago, roughly at the same time. Uh, that Stephen was for one of my rental properties. And uh, the economics back then didn't quite work out just because the financing rate that I could get at the time. Thank you. And uh, so yeah, I'm interested in uh, being a part of the, uh, the board here and looking at primarily being on the selection committee is something that I'd be interested in, but uh, yeah. No, I'm good. My name's Wayne. Uh, my background goes back to uh, ecology way, 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 way back. And uh, so I've kind of been interested in it all along that way. Uh, just actually this last summer I got a couple of guys out to talk about quotes and did some research on the various kinds. And uh, well, I'm interested in seeing how it, right now I can't afford it, but uh, I'm interested in the, like the whole process and, and seeing uh, where this thing goes. Uh, my name is Matt Pointer. Um, I guess I'm here because I'm passionate about renewables and EVs and the whole nine yards, I guess. Um, uh, I was able to get solar in my house about two and a half years ago, and it's worked fantastic, and uh, I'm a big advocate for it. And I guess I'd just like to be here to volunteer uh, in whatever capacity to kind of, you know, grow this thing and show people that, you know, this is the real deal and it can be both economical as well as uh, environmentally a good way to go. And Recently, I, I signed up for the uh, solar installer program that's coming up on January 8th. Cool. Uh, so I'm pretty excited for that. Um, I'm Paul, and I actually know Matt. He got me into this. Um, I'm just a carpenter, but I work with Matt, like doing finishing in his house. So he actually just got me into it. Like, oh yeah, you know what? I have panels on the roof and stuff like that. So he's kind of like a living situation slash experiment of what I might do later on. And it's just really cool to see, like, firsthand, like, panels and the whole works. Um, yeah, I'm going with that uh, installer uh, program as well, so hopefully going to get approved for that. And, yeah, cool. Set up some panels. And, yeah. That's awesome. I'm Reginald. Um, heard about the group interested in, in sort of putting panels on the roof as well. Um, like, 
people here. And I guess my background, I, I work in finance, uh, working commercial real estate is sort of uh, my area. Um, other than that, I just thought I'd come out and lend a uh, hand if I can. I, I guess uh, some further background is I work for uh, a company that's part of the cooperators group. And so the cooperators obviously is a cooperative and uh, their initiative is uh, green energy as well. They're, they're very much into that. So um, you know, if I can sort of provide any connection on that part, Max, are you going to go? No? Okay. I'm Karen and uh, I'm interested in uh, getting other people interested in, uh, in solar and growing it and uh, I'd like to get it on my roof, on my home and, and get an electric vehicle down the road. Mm. And I'm Tamala, um, the same roof as Karen, so we have this interest in, <laughs> in uh, Going solar, and I'm I'm you know compelled by the environmental stuff, uh, but also the economic balance and how it's becoming more compelling that way. Um, and my background is in policy and procedure type of things. Um, and I would I would my interest too is also with the cooperative model. Uh, it becomes a, a group that perhaps can get our government a little bit more interested in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm John and my interest is, you know, uh, I first started off as sort of personal in the sense of, <clears throat> you know, can you get a panel up and, and then I have uh, friends in, back in Ontario and in Nova Scotia who are into it in a major way in Ontario, it's, it's exploding. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it, it is, Oh, it's hot. I mean, it's there's no question about it. And that um, the, the the other thing that I'm interested in is is in a larger scale in terms of letting other people who don't have who are in condominiums or apartments or like me in, in large houses that have trees all around them and you don't want to cut all the trees down. Uh, so I'd be more interested in. In, in a larger scale production, which I think is in the end result, but in the end, the way to go with solar. I mean, like individuals is good, and then I think it's great, but I think large scale farms like like we see everywhere else is probably going to go. My, my background is in the media, so uh, I have some interest in that, but it's so mostly a personal interest. In the and I'm John. <laughs> I, do the, I do the filming uh, of, and uh, yeah, the previous meetings are on YouTube, so if people want to catch up with the presentations, then go and check them out there. Uh, my background is information technology and uh, Bitcoin, that kind of thing. And uh, I have pa had panels for two and a half years now, too. My name is Brody McGregor. Uh, my background's in IT as well. My interest in this, I looked into solar panels about three years ago and it wasn't great for us at that time. Uh, since then I've moved and I'm going to rip down a single garage and build a huge garage. So I'm thinking I can put solar panels on there. That's likely later next year kind of thing. And then for this group, uh, I'm not sure where I'll fit in, but just wherever I can help out kind of thing. Yeah, well, thanks everyone. It's it's great to uh, I know I've met a lot, a lot of you already at the uh, end of the other meetings, but it's nice, you know, that this group is taking shape. And I think, as I mentioned last time, I'm I'm not used to making agendas or doing this stuff. I'm used to like controlling unruly grade nines and tens. <laughs> but um, so this is easy for me. yeah. <laughs> So I see myself as more of a spark plug or some kind of organizer at, at this point. But um, yeah, um, just going into point one there about forming the leadership team and, and, and uh, you know, just my disclaimer that I'm not used to this kind of stuff. Anyone who has further information or more insight into any of this stuff, please just pipe up. Um, but uh, as I was looking at this, uh, these are some positions that I thought would be of use to us for us to fill 
and for people to kind of assume some responsibility at some level. Now, whether we actually are able to fill some of those tonight, that would be great. But if not, we can look at um, the possibility of, of uh, doing this over the next you know, month or so. Uh, bookkeeping and financial management. Uh, we, we had a, a person who's already said they will give their time um, in the meantime. They're, they're just helping me with the registration fees right now. Um, and Matthew here has also said he could help out more on a financial management. Uh, I, I'm thinking, of, especially as we look at the large scale co-op model, like this is something we're going to have to think more and more about, and it's going to it's going to have to be in the realm of people who have expertise in these areas, and not just random volunteers like me. So um, I think that's really helpful that people as part of this group are willing to step in that area so I think that's safe to say we have some um, we have some people in those positions I don't know if any of, of you would be interested in helping out in that area as well um, but do, do let me know or, or let us know um, the co-op expert uh, I thought that would be uh, April is going to be speaking in a and I should say, we've had to change the meeting. This is deviating a little bit from the script, but December 11th, they actually are having their last open mic and they really want to hit it hard. So they asked if we could go the next day, April 12th, which is a Tuesday. So um, I will send that out. But anyways, at the next meeting, April was planning to speak and uh, particularly offer some leadership in the area of co-ops and I think she's going to be looking at the Saskatoon model and kind of proposing some stuff to us as a group. So um, that's great. In terms of a president role, um, if it's just seen as an organizer in a sense, I'm willing to go forward as that. And Susan also has said that we could kind of be co-presidents or whatever at this point. And if other people are interested in that, um, I don't know how long that'll be me in this position, but. Um, like I said, Susan is interested and we can continue to provide leadership in that way. I feel like in a sense we have, uh, Susan and I and Stephen, have, even though Stephen was like, I don't want to be a leader, <laughs> but Susan and I are kind of said, well, we can be the point people for people who want to communicate and want to send questions and try to be the organizers of the organizers, I guess, if that's what the president is in a sense. <laughs> so. Um, so that that uh, that's that. In terms of terms of a vice president, this is something that um, I. These are just suggested roles. I'm thinking it'd be nice to have one person who really is wants to really have some leadership in the group buying model. So that was the uh, the DC model we talked about. So maybe someone here is like I really I really want to do a lot of investing in that I want to be on the selection team like and I I would like to kind of take that on as as uh, I'll lead that kind of group of people that are that are uh, looking at that group buying model yes so Andrew that might be uh, something you'd be interested in um, and then also uh, someone who leads the large-scale solar co-op model so someone who's kind of uh, more interested in that end of things and obviously I mean April is going to educate on us and she's part of the membership and I think she would be interested in that but if anyone else here is interested in that too that could be something we could have as well so um, and then uh, director of communications and marketing someone who can engage with the media and the public about our solar co-op and what it's doing they or someone else could also document our meetings so that those that can attend can stay up to date. And I kind of had assumed that maybe, John, you could do that. Uh, at least this, the latter part of just like filming our actual meetings and getting the, the information out As long people. as I'm here, I'll do that part. Okay. I, I don't want to formally sign up for a secretary role, though. Yeah. I'm already a president of a car share co-op, so okay. I don't want to start another co-op uh, board. Okay. Well, at the very least, in the meantime, you can help us there. And, and uh, uh, 
sorry, is it John again? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know you mentioned before you had some connections in the media, but I don't know if that's something that that you would be interested in. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I, I don't um, know. Like I, I think on the larger scale, maybe because yeah. I'm from the media, right? Is it, like probably I can assist somebody mm -hmm. in terms of more policy or strategies, and I would want to do that. Okay. Uh, to, to actually sort of take the point, it, it's just something that, that for me it's evolving. I don't know what the time, the timing is important. For right. Me in terms of what I can do, and if I want to be the point person, it, it's just something I have to sort of. What, right. What is my time frame? Like I, I'm in between projects right now, but if I get a project, yeah. You know, I'm not. Yeah. So gonna be okay. I know that I've already been leaning on my partner, Morgan, that she used to work in the media and, and she works as a marketer now, so she's already been doing a bit of stuff. And then, you know, I I don't know about you guys, but I thought the, the presentations that Stephen does are amazing and he has that kind of background as well in media and creative stuff. So I think he, maybe there'd be a little group of people that could kind of share that. Um, so, um, technical advisor, I thought, I don't know if that's the right way to put this, but someone with electrical, carpentry, engineering background that can lend us expertise just in kind of the, the nuts and bolts of how this goes, like, because a lot of us are more like on the, uh, I don't know, the administrative slash ideas side, and it'd be nice to have someone who's works in... I don't know, I'm looking at you. Yeah, I can help out with that. <laughs> and I've heard your first name again. So Paul. Paul, right. I mean, especially going through that course, I'm sure you guys would yeah. have like, the technical knowledge coming out of that. Yeah, both you and... Yeah, that's what I heard about. Yeah, from what I asked, figured out about that course. Yeah. Um, like, you need an electrical background mm -hmm. in um, like getting your actual installations. Right. Yeah. So... I mean, I think that course is pretty much like three quarters of the whole deal, yeah. and then just getting the last bit of electrical stuff figured out, maybe through them. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that course is pretty much like you're kind of certified through Canada if you're already you know working electrician. So. Yeah. Well, and so yeah, both you and Matt could provide some and you know, um, some very because you know we we uh, I think it's great you guys are going to do that because one of the questions we're going to talk about today is. You know, when we start to look at installers, it's just going to be half helpful to have people who understand well, a bit of that. Hopefully, stuff. like some random guy just doesn't come up and then gives yeah. us a crazy deal that we don't even need. Right. So, more technically, you know, right. forward we are with it, right. the better we can kind of understand wrap our heads around it. Right, totally. So, if you guys are, you know, even on that selection committee as well, sure. I think that would be important. Uh, I find yeah. throw a point here. So when I was out in Calgary last week, I actually met with uh, one of the suppliers in the industry. They do uh, mini inverters, and they've also expressed interest in uh, potentially finding installers out here and also willing to, uh, like you said, offering a training piece. Mm -hmm. They were fully on board with that as well. So oh, I can probably put them in contact with you guys if you want to find out more. Uh, you know, it's about their particular product, but I mean, still, if they're willing to give you free training on it. Yeah. Well, the one thing, I mean, I was talking with another member who hasn't been able to be the meetings, but yeah, I work with him at, at Miller. And he's like, has there been any installers attending your meetings? And I was like, I don't think so. And he's like, what if, why not? <laughs> and I was like, well, we're not inviting them, but I still am surprised that, that nobody's people heard about just it haven't been coming. I think just they've. I think I know one who's probably heard, but they're, maybe they're just too busy installing yeah. right now. Okay. <laughs> and if the, right now, well, the, the sun shines uh, May K, right? Because it's like minus one, so it's yeah. maybe a good time to do it. Yeah. No, I, but I'm just you know the, and and not that I'm saying that we we didn't invite them. I'm just saying like the potential for earnings for a company. I mean, essentially they could have walked through a room and had 50 interested people. They could have been. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and and uh, like just to give you guys an example of some of the questions I've already had is you know is Monday a good day or should we rotate the days like I'm I've always been of the opinion that you keep a regular day so that people kind of just have it in mind and they you know if some people can't make it well that's you're always gonna have that right but some people suggested we rotate the meeting schedule and then we have to decide how often the meetings are going to be in the new year too and and is it necessary that we meet as a big group and how often is that or or and then obviously we're going to meet more in this type of way for people who are on the leadership group right but so but anyways that is that is another it'd be nice to have someone who's and maybe there's a position that would encompass a couple of these things I've written down in here. I, I just, like I said, don't have a whole lot of experience with some of this terminology. So maybe there's someone that, like under a secretary role that looks after that in addition to a, some of these other things. But I'm just showing you guys the things that I think are important and needed, you know? Yeah, um, so I think you make a good point. Like at this point, yeah. um, I think there's some rules to be filled, but I'd say that we sort of roll st stuff together. Cause right. Like, in my opinion, anyways, I don't know if there's enough to consume. Somebody to be say, like, I was thinking in this case, Vice President of Communications, and you have this event planner like that. Right. Here, that individual can be one and the same until right. you sort of get to a scale. Maybe, I mean, I'm just thinking about it. Well, and essentially, I'm going to fill that role until right. someone would take it on anyway. So, but I'm just saying if there's yeah. people that are interested, but that's a good point. I don't know. Um, data entry and statistics, someone can keep track of our activities as a group so that we can keep information on our group. I think this is especially important as we start, as we get statistics on how many people got involved, what did they do, what, you know, because, I mean, I'm, I'm envisioning with the, the group buying model that we're going to have not just one phase, there's going to be repeated phases of people going in and it'll be nice to have statistics and information about how that went and even what people's roofs are like and you know the some of the uh, information around was it what 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 uh, what side did it face how much energy are they getting like that information can all help us with our large-scale co-op as well. That can all be helpful information. Or even just guys who come out, right? Guys who come right. to a meeting. Are you here, you know, are you a homeowner? Are you a condo owner? Are right. You just, and what model are you looking at, right? You know, yeah. You sort of aggregate and sort of do your yeah. analytics that way. Right? And we've been doing some of that already, but it just, again, I don't have expertise in that area. So I'm just kind of like, crap shooting things together a little bit so I'd like someone who's who is feels more confident in that I had a, a person who did help but I said here she's pretty busy so I don't know if she can continue but I can keep I mean she was an excel spreadsheet wizard and I was like whoa she was showing me stuff that was blowing my mind um, but uh, if anyone else that you guys here or someone you might know I mean like I said I sent this out to all, everyone today so there might be some other people come back with stuff. I don't have the expertise there, but that's something I can help with. Okay. Like, I, I think the idea is um, is that you can push this out quite easily. Yeah. In the old days, in law, you, you know, if you have a good website, yes, and the website becomes the center or the focus for anybody interested in the joining, yes, then all of a sudden, okay, it's got it can you can walk through all the steps. Right. So it's not hard. I mean, it's, yeah. it, 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 in terms of what it used to be, right. It, it's not that hard. You used yeah. to have, you have to meet the hard way. I mean, like you can and, and you can build in the the the, uh, the dynamic of you know, collecting data. Yeah. Dot data mining. It's all in, and it's quite easy. I mean, yes. It's not easy in the sense yeah. you're going to set it up. I don't think it's easy. Numbers. But I mean, like you got to. Right. Uh, but if you approach people the right way on the net. Yeah. All of a sudden, you end up with 50, 50, 200, 500 kids. Right. And you get, here are the people that are interested. We know they're in a certain part of the city. We know, that, you know, they, we know what they're, they're interested in. They're in condos. You know, you can get right. that information. It's quite, it's, right. it's good. It's not, it's not as hard as it used to be, that's for sure. I'm just saying that, you know, it'd be nice if someone that's already a member 
oh, yeah. just already has that information and knows how to do that or, you know what I mean? The, the only thing I'd say is that if you build it right now, yeah, and that's the first step, and I would say it's an important first step, Yeah. not, to, you know, and I know you want to put up panels because that's what yeah. you're doing, but if you can build that in already, yeah. then it's, it becomes a very powerful instrument and that later on it'll help you out when you start pushing stuff out. Yeah, that's a good point. Are, are you going to build us a website, Max? Um, what, do you, what do you think? I want to be a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> website wizard? All right. Well, even then, like, even at the beginning of the game, right, you got to sign it and collect information. Yeah. You can sort of have, like, you were doing the questionnaire, it's just sort of an extension off of that. So, yeah. you know, people readily provide you the email, phone number, you know, whatever information. Right. Uh, you can sort of add, use that as a beginning aggregate for it. As long as you have the email, you can kick it back. You can right. send right. out questions. Well, and then from there, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, Facebook it's, page. If, and then people right. will come to a meeting, to be honest with you, and they, they're more, and they're willing to accept questions. Right. And I think that's what you have, is that, you know, like, uh, there's a, there is, and I think you you said to me, there's a lot of potential in this, there's no question yeah. about it. And there's a lot of power in it. Yeah. You know, because if people want to put their houses and give space to a bloody, you know, uh, you know a solar panel, yeah. it's quite important. That, yeah. you know, that means they want to put time into it, money into it. So if you can get that, then you have, and multiply that by whatever it is, the numbers, and I would say, I think there's a lot of, you know, my guess is that there's a lot of interest. Yeah. And the question is, how do you mine that? How do you, how do you develop that? And that's the question. Yeah, and I, I mean, I like your points about the, I think the website is something I want to talk a little bit about as well. And then, you know, just something that you were saying, Reginald, someone, this Ruth Easton, she suggested uh, just a simple thing like Google Forms where, you know, I tried to put this page online and people are having problems entering data and she said, well, I want to use Google Forms. And I was like, what is that? But it just shows you where I'm at with some of the stuff. Yeah. She's like, well, then people don't need to actually have Google. They can just go there and enter it, you know? And I was like, oh, well, it'd be nice if someone like you was just like planning this, and, you know what I mean? So, um, but that's, those are good suggestions. Um, I was thinking too, maybe what I'll do, you guys mind, I, I, uh, I don't know if I have a clean piece of paper, I thought it'd be good to pass around the papers, people just write down their names, who's here today and stuff, yeah, maybe we could just pass that around, um, so that's, that's good feedback, um, they flip the page over, uh, the leadership selection committee, and obviously, as you mentioned, Reginald, there's going to be people who are going to be in more in one position here. These are people that are going to help us with selecting our chosen company to perform our installations. Is there, I mean, besides Andrew, who I know, you know, he's going to head up that group. Is there anyone else here that is really interested in being in that selection committee? Okay. Matt, you as well? Sure. Okay. Um, anyone else? I'm interested in that as well. Okay. Um, there are several forms of this stuff. Yes. And, and before people start choosing which one they want, like there's a lot of, well, there's pros and cons to the And as far as the quality of them and, and all those technical things, what's your name? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And sorry, your first name? Wayne. Wayne. Okay. Are we yeah, putting an email sure. on it? I think we should put in burgers. Oh, okay. You yeah. know, you're, what class of panel you get with 300 plus, you get into the, you know, the 220, yeah. So you guys, that's... And that's sort of what they're made of. Some yeah. of them are cheaper than others. And right. Yeah. And I think... It's a huge conversation. Oh, yeah. Yes. Because... <laughs> the spreadsheet I've got going... Cost, on quality, on environmental... And, right. and that's got to be a group discussion on yeah. what... How we want to weight those things, right? Well, is cost more important? Is environment more important? Where does right. it fall out? The whole backbone of... of yeah, it's the backbone of what it is you're buying. So, I mean, if you don't know what product you're buying, like the selection part of the whole thing is crucial. Exactly. Even if you came down to, okay, here's, here's A and B, and here's the difference. Yeah. Well, and, and we want the type of people like you that are like passionate about researching this to the tenth degree, right? And and I think that's exactly the kind of people we want 
representing our group on that committee, right? I think on the other end of that too is with your uh, data collection is understanding what every, everybody who has a piece of real estate is going to have a different demand, right? Right. A different need. The house could be facing a certain way, they're going to get right. a certain exposure. So it's going to be aligning sort of what the technical specs you get to what the membership actually right. requires. Because you can buy the best for right. south facing sunny exposure, but some guys facing north, you know, what, what does he need or what's right. better suited for him? It's a part of that process, like if you go through the point of picking an installer, that's yeah. what they do. Yeah. So, so they'll come out and tell you. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so we just sort of need, yeah, like, uh, uh, so it's thinking on both ends, right? Not just on the suppliers, but on the on the consumer right. as well. And I think that um, another thing, uh, I'm glad that we're identifying already a group of you guys, because uh, I think a, a task that I was thinking, I think I have it written down here, but maybe I don't. Um, is for you guys to kind of get each other's contacts and to, you know, it doesn't have to look like what I did, even though I have that software now, but another survey that would go to be even be more particular to the people who we know are signing up right now and, and asking some of the questions Reginald just mentioned, like more specifics about your exact house and the product you're looking for. And that'll give you guys more information to work on that RFP as well. So, um, so I think, you know, that this meeting is just to get you guys find out who those people are and then you can plan to how that's going to look, right? Um, so the, uh, then the next group I mentioned is the request for proposal and I already had a couple members who work with this professionally, two people, one for the, I think they're both one in government, one in business level and they've offered to give their expertise to our group. So I thought, you know, I don't think they're here tonight, but I thought that after the selection committee has come up with, you know, you guys can work with them and they can put together the paperwork for that RFP. Well, and the one flows right? into the other. Yeah. So, so um, and you guys remember that timeline we had, like, this is the thing. I. I don't, I don't want us to be rushed, but at the same time, we want it, we'd like to get started sooner than later. I think people are eager, right? So, um, so anyways, those are things we have to look at, but those, we already have a couple people in that RFP group, and then just meeting minutes, like maybe that's just something like John is doing with the camera, but if anyone else is interested in that, but is there, is there anything else, like kind of, responsibility or position wise that you guys think I'm leaving off of here? Yeah. I'm just thinking we can take a step back and sort of um, think like overall, right? Because right now, from what I understand, we're trying to start a quarter or a yeah. committee, right? And so um, I think two most important things right now is uh, you need a mission statement and a vision and a mission statement. And then you also need some bylaws in terms of, I know this is sort of bureaucratic, but you sort of need to have the, the parameters in which uh, you're going to operate and then sort of have uh, uh, an, uh, a guiding pair of uh, sentence or something that sort of helps guide your decisions in, right. in what we're doing. I, I, think, yeah, I think it's uh, because yeah. Saskatoon is always on co-op and that you can steal their, oh, sure. yeah. 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 Steal their history and, you know, and be open to it could change because we're trying this different yeah. or whatever and that you know different personalities different people different needs yeah so that you know you could lay that down oh yeah yeah you can get a lot of other places you might as well might as well grab and take it and see how far you can go with it right so for sure but i just think we need some parameters yeah. for which sort of everybody plays by this rule book right as opposed to you know because you're going to get a lot of pull from from the membership from you know different right. interests in group. Um, so I, I feel that those are some important parts. Um, and then also, once you sort of establish that, you need to sort of figure out, it sounds like there's two different sides of it. One is people want to put panels on the roof, and another one is the, the Saskatoon model, whereby it's, you know, it's just people putting money into the co-op, and the co-op's sort of establishing a solar farm. And from what I understand, my impression is this group is more focused on putting panels on the roof as opposed to building a solar farm. Is that right? Or I don't, I don't know. know. That's something we got to start I, I think initially, I mean, we've done 
uh, data on that, yeah. and it's it's it, it was initially the what you said, but yeah. we found in the data it's actually more than half, seventy five percent are interested in the group model as the well. Group, like building a farm. Yes. So in that yeah. sense, like I think that's going to also affect how this co op starts because right. you got two diverging interests right now that I feel you need to sort of focus on one and yeah. get good at it so that you can sort of do the next step and right. Well, well I think Josh's I don't know, hope was that they were going to get a leadership team for each and each of those yeah. teams could go and take and run it off, right? Okay. Yeah, that's so, exactly right. And I think that's maybe one of the issues right now is I don't know if there's anybody that's been identified that wants to take and run with the large co-op model. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah, because that's kind of a beast in itself, right? You guys. Yeah. I mean, it looks like their capital required is going to be in the hundreds of thousands. Yes. So you're not talking about you know ten, twenty grand. You're, you're, you're looking at raising some serious capital, which yes. has regulatory implications. Going on. And from what I understand, Susan and April are yeah. very passionate about that side. Right. And and I and I think um, I went into it more interested in the private homes, but right. I've just, as I've learned more about this group model, I'm like, right. let's do it. And what I've heard from down in DC, which is one of the models we we're kind of looking at, is, is um, she said that actually doing the private homes can be a real, that can provide real good immediate feedback. Sure. And it doesn't require as much of the red tape business structure that you're talking well, about. Well, it, yeah, it's that, yeah. and it's the capital, right? Yeah. You're looking at a group to pool together, you know, say, right. let's say a hundred thousand. Right. Plus, find somebody who wants to put it on their roof. I mean, there's a lot of risk involved. Well, and the thing is, the thing that mitigates, and this is why we're not a true, um, why we're not a true cooperative in the group buying model. It, we're kind of forsaking a lot of those you know bylaws and rules and stuff and, and the capital is provided by each individual person so right. that money isn't yeah. even handled by well, the group and i right? think the other side of it yeah. is you have the sas part rebate that's set to expire in november next year yeah so that's sort of your fuse that's right maybe exactly swing, you know which way you go yeah um I just initially think, not to say that you can't do both yeah. but i just think it it's I appreciate what you said because we've yeah. talked a lot about this but yeah. I think what Andrew said is the case like we have kind of as a group we have people that are really committed to both and we can kind of set up structures so that the and and I agree the large-scale model is going to be the one that takes more time and yeah. more energy um, but if there is motivated people on that side they can keep informing sure. the rest of us who just want to be involved more to peripheral level as they continue to pursue yeah. that because a lot of them in that group aren't even as interested in the um, well there's yeah then there's overlap in skill sets yeah. right like the selection committee of all the equipment I mean that's going to be you yeah know, I mean I think the parameters to, change right? significantly when you go to the large scale model but right. I mean we've already got data tables on what the types of panels are and what the different inverters are and the different products right. that we'll need so we can take that data and you know I'd be happy to work on that large pop model down the road yeah. uh, but my own personal focus is going to be making sure we have the right balance and the right products for people that want to have the product in their house. Right. Okay. Next, Next. Are you going to make electric motorcycles? Electric motorcycles? They already have them. They're made by zero. <laughs> <laughs> They're awesome. I just drove one to beat them around. Too. <laughs> um, They're fast. <laughs> but uh, in terms of, of your point, Reginald, um, how would you suggest yeah, I mean, given what you're seeing from how we want to go with both these models at the same time, how would you suggest implementing the mission, vision statements, and bylaws? And, or sorry, John, do you have? Do you have, yeah. you have an idea? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, take Saskatoon's bylaws and then modify them. It, it is, the, the hardest thing will be to figure out how not to make the section about how we support home installations not contradictory with the how do we support a creating a large solar farm right oh, they're, 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 they're two different types of co-ops like as a home owner one of the things you get solar on my roof it's kind of like a consumer co-op i'm looking to get a good exactly. deal from buying power uh, and so there are they're completely different goals yeah and the other one I, i'm hoping to 
respect to saving the planet and helping my neighbors do that kind of thing. Right. Everybody's going to have their own balance of what they want to pursue on that. Right. I was sort of hoping that Saskatoon would provide the emphasis on the solar farm side for the province while we could do the the uh, home-based uh, yeah. assistance and then work together as co-ops can do and each be excellent at our own but I mean that's just my like I, I think if we do both we're going to be worse off at the start anyway because I don't know how we're going to make money to in any regard really I don't like how is the co-op also going to make generate funds because we're going to have to do that to have enough to pay a staff person at some point ideally right. yeah they in Saskatoon doesn't have a staff person I think but they said they have support from the SAS co-op association or right we're not gonna need funds for different things yeah. like we'll need an accountant at some point or yeah. not sure. for pressure, you buy 50 uh, common or something like yeah. that and then your pressure essentially buys your panel. Do you guys think I, I'm going to come to some of that stuff in a later on? Um, sorry. Do you think we can just keep moving on? Because I think we're going to come to that some of that. But this is all good stuff. So the the point number two um, was just on the group buying model, and um, this is what I was just talking about. Andrew was identifying members who are ready to sign up for this option immediately. If we, and I know this relates to what we're talking about, but um, if we're talking about just initially getting people's feet in the door with this, uh, the private installations, um, I mean, the, the problem is, is if we wait, which could happen, and we could explain it to people, but uh, I guess this has organically been forming, right? And there was expectations that have already been set up. Uh, like I remember a PowerPoint I put up about a timeline, right? Like here's where we're gonna be at. This is our goals already, right? And people are like, yeah, this is uh, this is at least people are going away from that saying, okay, this is the understanding. And then we just had this the large scale meeting, and I, a lot of people were excited about that, right? And I was like, well, what did that look like, right? But I, my opinion is that I think we we need to keep on moving forward with the the private homes model. Um, because we've already kind of made that promise to people who've been attending the meetings. If you guys, would you guys agree? Like that is, is that the take takeaway? I, I yeah. think you have to be careful. Uh, yeah, and I do think, I think maybe Saskatoon can help you a little bit more with this. Is that you, you, you know? It, um, I don't think they're divisive. I think you can build, but I don't know how. Yeah, because if people say, "Well, I just want to get my panels up," which is a good which is good. Right. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because you want to see the meter go the other way. Yeah. And it's exciting to do that. But the thing is, if you're building a cooperative, you better make sure that you're taking the right steps. You're not you know, hurting, you know, because it's on an individual basis. Da, 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 da. I, I, and I, again, I refer to somebody in Saskatoon who's had these questions, resolved them in some ways, and you know, make sure you don't take a false step. You know what I'm saying? Is that you, you, you want the enthusiasm, the connection, the idea of what, you know, I want to put panel on, or I want to get going with this, and there's deadlines, and blah, blah, blah. But how do you build a cooperative long term, and what's the benefit of right. that? Well, you don't want to make long steps. So yeah, I, 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 it's, it's important is. not to alienate the people from the large scale co op that want to see that model succeed. Because ultimately, that's that's going to be significantly bigger in terms of the the overall impact. Um, but I think the individuals in that group are going to understand that it's going to take a little longer to, for it to sort of coalesce and come together. And, and I think really it comes down to having a couple of key individuals that really want to take that model. And, and I think it's going to come when you have the next meeting with the uh, the individual who wants to you know how to establish co-ops. So you're going to see that that engine is starting to turn. We're essentially just you know two weeks ahead on the other side of it. So I think you really are going to have two paths, but with people that have a common goal of wanting to see more solar. So I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I think from a you know from a regulatory standpoint, they're completely separate entities. But we have common people that are part of both boards that want to see you know both projects do well. But I think from a you know a purely bylaw standpoint, legally I think they kind of need to be separate. From finance rules and all those kinds of things, um, but we can have members that are, you know, parts of both communities. So to speak. 
But the common mission statement then could be we want more solar in Saskatchewan. Right. Yeah. Is that common between both? So. Or yeah. Further, I think it's even we go more broad and to say furthering green energy in right. the province of Saskatchewan or in the city of Regina, like whatever you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like the Saskatoon guys, it seems like they're really focused on Saskatoon. Um, and I, you know, it's just sort of what the goose was saying is, well, if somebody really wants to join a large scale co-op, there's nothing stopping you from writing a check to the Saskatoon guys and saying, I want it. Like, yeah. you, we don't even have to set up a board to do that, right? It's already there and they can participate yeah. and be part of that. Now this, this home model is, is completely different. And that's something Saskatoon hasn't done that. Nobody's done that on the road, right? Mm -hmm. And so the value proposition, I think, is like, why even try to do the mass scale? It's already there. It's available. You can go to market. It is and it isn't. So one of the questions I asked in the last meeting yeah. was, are you guys willing to have, you know, essentially a Regina chapter of right. an existing thing? And they basically said, yeah, we're not super interested in it. Right. They didn't. They said we would, you know, do what we can to help out and, and grow the organization, but they'd rather see their own separate board down here, their own duplicated right. structure. Which is fine, but like yeah. just saying, if somebody's really yeah, so we want to go today and have a thousand dollars pocket to invest in solar, yeah. and you can do it tomorrow. There's the other right. point that you can just all if all of us. I don't know how big their board is or their membership in Saskatoon. Does anyone? We've have got 168 it? members. So if we got together 169 members in Regina, we would be the co-op. We'd have the voting majority. <laughs> and, but what? And, so. <laughs> They have 168, they put up what is it, 180 bucks, they buy a panel. Right. So if there is a commitment. Right, yeah. Yeah. So that's it is. So it's, and plus, if there's more panels, but to me, it's, that's, that's, a, that's a real hard cash to get up to. Right. So, and that, I'm sure that just be easy to get to the co op or whatever. But I mean, that's, so that's how far they, they've taken it that way. It's real. And I'm, you know, I don't know why they've done it, but I mean, like, the thing is, is that. What do we want to do? What, do, what, what does this co-op want to do? Right. And I think you're at the early stages. I think that you know there's a keen interest in you know, putting up panels, which is but that's what people do in solar, in solar energy. They put up panels. So I think, I think the question is is what long-term implications does that have? What, what do you want to do in terms of what's what's? And this is where I think Saskatoon can help. Right. What is the benefit of doing individually or a larger scale? And right. that you don't want to deter. I don't want to deter anybody from putting up a solar panel. Yeah. But I want to say in terms of what implications that have for a co-op, right? Which is, which, which are I think there are, there are implications, and you want to know what those are before you so commit to an idea. And, and right. you know, I don't want to, I don't want to put the cut wash on anything, but I mean, like, keep going. Get the energy, but make sure that you have talk to the people in Saskatoon and say, "Hey, what the hell? How did you deal with this stuff?" Because you know, you know, now it seems like the prices have come down. There's all kinds of interest. You know, you're, you know, between, you know, a government uh, edict that says, "Hey, we were, or, or SAS Power saying we'll give you a bigger kickback." All of a sudden, then you'll get from one hundred to two hundred, but maybe five hundred to six hundred. Sorry, is there an, oh, thanks, Max. No, and Susan, hi. Um, I think that's, I mean, this is, this is why I think it's good that both Susan and I, I mean, we've had these kind of discussions already, and like, because I came in more from the, the private homes, and Susan is, is really, has eyes for the, the large-scale co-op, so I think that's, I mean, I don't think we're going to resolve it tonight, but it's just stuff that we're going to have to continue to talk about and possibly uh, what I wrote down here is a next leadership meeting we have, we, we discuss our vision and mission and how we, what direction we would go and how it would be encompassed in both groups. Yeah. Sorry, if I can add to that too, like just thinking about this is, you know, how often are you buying solar or green or whatever, right? I mean, do you, I guess the question is, do you need a co-op to do a group plan? Like, is there any point in setting up a co-op? That was my only question. People, yeah, if people are going to buy this once every 25 years, do you need a co-op? Or do you just get a whole bunch of people, make a list and say, hey, go yeah. we'll find a guy, you know, can you supply for all these people? Um, Essentially... That's, that's, 
essentially no, aspect of it. Essentially, you don't. No, right? You don't. So then you don't need to have this membership, or you know, you don't need to have bylaws and meetings, and you know. Yes. So I'm just, I know I'm not saying that this group yeah. is not doing anything. I'm just sort yeah. of trying to challenge and put that out there. And yeah. Well, people is, think about it. This is a, that's exactly the question my colleague asked, who is who has economic motivation solely to get solar, and is right. not terribly concerned about environmental anything. He's curious economically. And yeah. So once you buy it, why do you need to go up? What are you going to do with it? And so that then that circles back to the question: if we want a co-op of some sort of a consumer co-op, that we need a really strong mission and vision and goals right. to understand. What's the value? The other value added. Once, once the panels are on my house, uh, why would I want to continue to participate? Right. Um, so, there's, I think there's more. To, I see more to it than that. But I, what I see is, uh, you can buy. You can uh, have an objective of having the big co-op, like a farm. Okay. So that's the big objective. You don't have to start working on that. That could be sort of the goal that you're working towards as a group. Because we know a lot of people that, like like the, the renters that want to be in it, and they're not putting it on their rental place. So that's their that's their part, right? Whereas on the other side, if, if you got if you put together a hundred homeowners and went to somebody and said, hey, you got a hundred units here for you to put up in like buildings. How much of a deal you gonna cut? You're gonna get a good deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can even you can even uh, market it as blocks. Right. You know, if you've got three installers, you know, and they're here's my price, here's that price, here's this. Right. With all this, the legal or the technical that goes with it, you would say, okay, well, well, you know, how much for a package of twenty? So right. So now suddenly the guy that comes in here and says, well, I'm interested in getting on that package. For my house, right. So there's your there's your volume buying, right. Well, and and, I, and if that's their only motivation, yeah. for what? Yeah. Well, no, and I mean, sorry, I got way late with the thing for Bev Roberts, um, but uh, I think I mean, you know, Josh did a survey, and about almost fifty percent, I think, of people said they were interested in. Well, both, you know, like they're interested in getting some economic benefits and so they could, you know, get the best deal on purchasing solar panels. But then I think a lot of people are also interested in what can this bigger concept bring. And, um, and I mean, 